do say so myself. Uh, we have a historically, you know, culturally significant game to discuss this week. Uh, yeah, I'll say culturally significant. Yeah, it's iconic. Everybody loves it. All right, Andrew, picture this. Yeah. It's 2001. Yeah. It's the... I'm baby. Seventh... Yeah. It's the seventh. <laughs> it's the seventh E3 conference. Bill Gates walks out on stage with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and he introduces to you the new Xbox. But what games, what games do you get with the new Xbox? video we're referring to is a video of Bill Gates and Dwayne The Rock Johnson introducing the new Xbox in a, let's just say they have a lot of chemistry on stage. It feels very natural. Everything about their interactions are, you know, what you would expect from two really good friends. But yeah, all kidding aside, it's a pretty embarrassing video. <laughs> it, it, it's essentially two grown dudes having a great time reading off of a teleprompter <laughs> next to each other. They are certainly talking at each other. They're not necessarily talking uh, to each other. They're just reading what, <laughs> what well, they're I, given. Well, we, we just watched it, and I think one of the funniest things we were talking about was how Bill Gates refers to him as just Rock. <laughs> he just, just says, hey, Rock. Yeah, because this was a pre-actor era, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, this was whatever Dwayne the Rock Johnson was the Rock and not yeah he was no Dwayne, he was a character no Johnson he wasn't himself he, he was, was yeah. he's clearly playing a character and only refers to himself in the third person as the, the rock. rock but good old Bill over here just yeah <laughs> never it, wants to call him the Rock this is a little bit before people started saying the phrase "hello fellow kids" as a derogatory term at old people trying to be like young people but this is certainly <laughs> bill gates being like yeah i'm cool i got the rock <laughs> i got the yeah, xbox he's like, i got the rock he's like i know a lot about you <laughs> rock <laughs> important takeaway here is that there are, is a weird era of video games certainly, they're introducing yeah. the xbox yeah. the xbox microsoft's foray into console gaming mm -hmm. really Previously, um, in the previous generation, Sony was the rookie and the underdog who was coming to the table with something new to bring. In the next generation, the PS2, the GameCube era, Microsoft had decided that they wanted to start dipping their toes in video gaming. It was an interesting take. When people heard first that the computer company was doing video games now, it was sort of a laughable idea. Up until maybe a little bit into its launch, it was still a laughable idea. And the video that we were referencing is a great example of Microsoft not being able to connect with a video gaming audience. And whenever you release a new game mm -hmm. console, you have to have some titles that are available as soon as it releases, or yeah. what's the point of playing it? Yeah, launch titles, which is and, something that everybody... And the game we wanted to look at this week is one of the Xbox's launch titles, yeah. available in the US, yeah. 2001's Fusion Frenzy. Now you might be saying, hey, why didn't you choose one of the good games? We don't have the good games. <laughs> uh, it's the only original Xbox game available in Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, which is a, a subscription <laughs> service that lets you play games, kind of like a Netflix. And um, and it seemed apt. <laughs> and my gosh, is it not even worth the two gigabytes of space <laughs> that it takes up on my Imme Xbox? Immediately delete. it. So Fusion Frenzy, if you're not familiar, is what many called Microsoft's answer to Mario Party. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a, it's a party-based game. You basically play with four people and you play party games. You, you play a lot of mini yeah. games. There's a lot of different themes. And what the game was praised about is it having a lot of variety of mini games. If you read a lot of the reviews of the time, there's a lot of variety in the mini games. I mean, I think we just got unlucky when we played it because we just kept coming up with the same kinds of mini games. There's a lot yeah. of like pick up the orb and take it to the Goal. basket yeah. while your teammates try to punch the orb off of you. And there are a lot of mini games in the collection that are just pick up the orb and put it in the basket. Yeah, but there's other games. There's like a, a Tron simulator, essentially. Yeah, yeah. like where a, you're trying a light to... cycle game. In total, there's 45 mini games. 45, I think that's what we counted. Mm -hmm. Depending on like what review of the time you look at, it says different amounts of mini games, but 
On the Xbox One today, the version we played, there was 45. Sometimes incorrect information gets passed down just because a lot of media about games and games reviews were in a written format in a less reliable format. Game companies weren't putting out that information themselves a lot of the time. So the first time you heard 40 mini games, it might have been in a review yeah. instead of the 45, which is actually the case. So Fusion Frenzy was developed by Blitz Games and mm -hmm. published by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So this is Microsoft's publishing exclusive to the Xbox. But developer Blitz Games had been around for a while at this point. Founded in 1990, game came out in 2001. So they've been around in the video game industry for about 11 years. They were often contracted for licensed games, but they were not owned by one company. And they were, they were a small UK developer that just kind of kept growing until eventually they had to close up shop in 2013. It's kind of interesting the reasons behind them having to close up shop because what you'll see in a lot of the news reports, they were talking about how they were just caught in an in-between mm -hmm. period in the game industry. Around 2013, you have games shifting to either AAA blockbuster titles with immense budgets. You know, I'm thinking of like games mm -hmm. like Destiny was really, yeah. that year, 2013, Grand Theft Auto V came out so it was just this small developer that just couldn't compete with the budgets of some triple a titles yeah and the death of the b game it brought a lot of developers down with it yeah uh, there were a lot of developers who developed games in that spirit whenever you look on bliss games list of developed games you get a lot of licensed content you get a lot of um well-known b games like epic mickey 2 you get all sorts of, you know, karaoke and hacky little game show games of that sort. They definitely made games to make money. They made games to keep afloat. It wasn't necessarily this big AAA developer, like you were saying. It's not. They weren't making Grand Theft Auto. They were making a small contract for Disney and getting good money out of it. Yeah. The other side of games at that time, then the other side kind of transitioning to free-to-play games. You know, more mobile games. Yeah. And a lot of low-budget ventures went in the free-to-play direction. Yeah. So, and it's interesting now, in 2020, a lot of the most popular games are also free-to-play games, mm -hmm. which is wild mm -hmm. that not only did the video game industry split into those two paths, but they eventually came together to become one game. That's the way a lot of games are going. And as a early 2000s video game player, it's maddening. <laughs> it's so maddening to see like advertisement within a game that you have purchased even AAA titles that you have to pay for nowadays are just loaded with microtransactions and it's just maddening so it's just kind of sad to see a developer of a really kind of small game like fusion yeah. frenzy well i mean fusion frenzy wasn't a small game i mean it was positioned by microsoft to be what they were hoping for you know a system yeah. seller that's why it was a launch title whether or not it succeeded on that yeah, it was an ambitious sort of thing for Blitz of Games. Yeah, and when you look at the history of Fusion Frenzy, it's kind of mixed because it is a launch title. It did come with a lot of Xboxes. Its selling numbers are almost directly tied to the selling yeah. of the Whenever Xbox. Whenever you have a small pool of games for a new console, the people who are crazy enough to buy the console at launch are also crazy enough to buy all of those games because they want games to play. Yeah. So whether or not it's packaged with the console it will be bought and that's true of most of the <laughs> most of the launch titles except for uh, some very forgettable ones even more forgettable than fusion frenzy which is mostly just poor not necessarily bad but i guess that's yeah. for later in the podcast to I talk mean, about our and it's impressions. like it's it's similar to wii sports yeah. like wii sports is one of the best net selling nintendo games yeah. of all time purely because Everyone and their brother seemed to have a Wii back in the day. Yeah. And therefore, everyone and their brother had a copy of. An interesting parallel to draw between Microsoft and Nintendo during both of those console launches. Wii was the generation after what we're talking about now. But they had two different approaches that were pretty much opposites from each other. Whenever we played Fusion Frenzy, we made a few observations that it was a little like like early 2000s sort of nickelodeon edgy sort of like grossy gross out humor and there was lots of bugs to be squashed and lots of grimy backgrounds with colorful characters it was very silly and obviously pandering to 
children be, of the 90s who were growing up who yeah. wanted more mature well it wanted to be hip really yeah, you certainly can just, it's written all over fusion yeah. frenzy let's, it's once it wants to be hip let's bring that back to the rock Let alone, video okay <laughs> let's bring it back to the very title of the game yeah fusion is spelled f-u-z-i-o-n <laughs> so bad <laughs> It's so dumb. It's like you're trying a little too hard <laughs> here. It's interesting. Some of the reviews describing the game as having Dreamcast qual like like graphics. Yeah. And, and the Dreamcast, whenever it launched, was very impressive for its time. Because yes. it, it came out as a half step in between PS1 and PS2, those eras of generations. So the Dreamcast was a jump in quality. But then whenever the PS2 came out, it was much more impressive than the Dreamcast. Dreamcast got sent to its early grave and Sega never recovered. Calling something Dreamcast-like quality graphics is pretty much the most damning thing you can say. <laughs> yes, it is, and it is, but most reviews go on to say the graphics of the game just subpar for the time, even for yeah, the time period. Yeah. And even when you look at the revised version on Xbox One, mm -hmm. there's not much that they could have done to improve the graphics, I don't think, because they're just bad. Yeah, it's mostly but, a stylization Yes, issue. but what a lot of the reviews are saying the game has going for it is its gameplay. The controls for the time, I didn't feel like this when we were playing it, but a lot of the reviews are saying the controls are highly responsive, yeah. highly accurate to what you're trying to do. The controller is nice, even though the controller yeah. for the Xbox was a behemoth of yeah. a thing. So a lot of those early reviews doubled as hardware reviews because whenever they were coming out with Fusion Frenzy reviews, they wanted to tell people whether or not that new Xbox was worth it. A lot of reviewing companies, like I know on the IGN review, they said this, they had access to the game even before it was announced at E3 that year, even before the Xbox was announced at E3 that year. So you have people that are reviewing the game literally before anyone has the chance of playing it. Anyone has the chance of playing the console it's on. To give us another perspective on reviews, GameSpot, which was having its sort of boom during this era, gave the game a 6.7 and generally gave it favor favorable reviews, but mostly to be supplemental with the other launch titles. In the face of Halo, Fusion Frenzy. You yeah, we should mention the other games <laughs> oh, yeah. that came out. Halo with the Xbox? was on that list. Halo yeah. was like an all-time platform classic. People still played Halo whenever the 360 came out. They really hit it out of the park with one of these launch titles, at least. And I mean, and other ones were also successful. Dead or Alive 3 was fairly successful. It's a successful series. It was a Japanese-developed game, which was a huge deal for Microsoft because they had pretty much none of those, and they still have a huge issue with connecting with Japan and, yeah, even, and building relationships. Even when the Xbox was launched, they only have two games for the Xbox in Japan. Yeah, whenever the Xbox launched in Japan, they had Jet Set Radio Future. Jet Set Radio was previously a Dreamcast game, so it was already familiar. And then a game called Double Steel. No one was going to go out... Um, Andrew's currently trying to search Double Steel, what Double is Steel this? Game what is on his this? computer. <laughs> Why have I never seen you, this in my life? Looks like a precursor to Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> That's not fair. You can't say that. So it seems like sort of a crazy taxi-like game, but two games is nothing. Two games is absolutely abysmal oh. for a console launch. And Microsoft in 20 years has not recovered that misstep in Japan. The Xbox had a lot of trouble because whenever you're up against two japanese developers yeah. and japan is a huge part of the video game consumer base microsoft not being a part of that ended up being bad so it's interesting that there's one japanese game on the u.s launch list dead or alive 3 but it's not on the japanese launch list yeah which is odd so for the Japanese launch of the Xbox, they only had two games that were exclusively for the Japanese launch. A few games from the US launch did come over. Dead or Alive 3 came over, among others. And they sold fairly well. Dead or Alive 3 was always a popular Japanese fighting game franchise. But having only two games set up for the Japanese launch, one of them being pretty insignificant, even difficult to get information on because of, because of its insignificance, which is double steel. It's disappointing, I'm sure, from Microsoft's perspective that they weren't able to make a splash. Everything sort of passes through Japan 
America pre Nintendo probably had that title whenever Atari was then Atari, reigning over North then America. Atari just destroyed the video game industry. Atari made some incredibly poor decisions and destroyed all of it. We're not even going to talk about uh, freaking E.T. Is that the game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, E.T. was the game. Atari's E.T. Sank the entire industry. Yeah, if that you've is ever too have much heard of a get. game, one singular game destroying the video game industry for a period of time. Yeah. Just look to Atari's E.T. Hey, man, we're lucky that wasn't Fusion Frenzy for the modern era. We're lucky Fusion Frenzy didn't sink the entire Well, luckily, industry. luck. I mean, luckily you had games like Halo that came out yeah, at the same time. You had so actually good games. Be, I think because there were so many other good games of this era mm-hmm. that Fusion Frenzy gets kind of swept under the rug a lot. Oh yeah. Even when you're like, does. even when you're looking for these archive reviews, it seems like a lot of places have just either stopped maintaining the file space for that review. Yeah. Or just completely thrown it out to all together. It's just kind of odd, especially with Fusion Frenzy being the only original Xbox game on Game Pass. So it's the only game from that era that Microsoft is really advertising you can still play. Technically, I know, I think the Master Chief Collection... Includes Halo 1. Includes Halo 1, but that is a remastered version. Yeah. Fusion Frenzy is mostly the same. You got a little upgrade, a little bit of upgraded graphics. It's mostly a graphics, resolution but upgrade. yeah. But it's mostly the same. And getting into our like brief play period of the game, when yeah. we play, we which played we, through the game, which we played through the game on the standard mode, going for as long as it would let us, which was six stages. Yes, which only took an hour, minutes. forty-five minutes. Yeah, and it was fun. It was it was fine. The game, like we started to hate it. We, we did definitely start to hate it. <laughs> we did. It did get on our nerves a little bit. Yeah, I, I, it's it's a little maddening. Like, I had picked up orbs a few too many times to really <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, our fifth mini game in a row where it was uh, pick up the orbs and place them in the basket. Oh, it, oh, hey, this time you're gonna pick up kegs. Yeah, and pick, put them in the basket. Yeah. So so it, it, the variety aspect. And all of those were considered different mini games. Yes. So of this 45, I would say actually the variety is not as impressive as it seems. Afterwards, we went back and played through a lot of the mini games that we didn't see on the original run through. But. And we found a couple that we kind of like. Yeah, sure. But I still think it's disappointing. I mean, (laughs) it's funny to say disappointing about a game that's 20 years old, but I do think it's kind of disappointing that so many are repeats. Uh, and which is and like the stages are even just yeah. the same but just recolored and retextured. Yeah. yeah. It's really kind of wild. Yeah. And it's sad. Oh, we yeah, we haven't mentioned this yet. But back to our good old friend Bill Gates mm-hmm. and the Billium? launch Billium? Billium Gates. Yeah, just Gates. Just Gates. Don't have a funny one. We just call him one. Gates <laughs> over here. We, we call him the G-man. G-Man, G-Man releasing the Xbox. <laughs> we haven't been able to find this anywhere, per se. We haven't but been able to find... you have a specific memory of this, so I'll let you talk about I it. I have, like, a weird shared memory with other people on the internet. This may be apocryphal, but I swear it's not, that during a Microsoft presentation where they were showing off Fusion Frenzy pre-release, pre-release of the Xbox, Bill Gates did say... Fusion Frenzy is my favorite game. And I think about you, it every you day. It, you heard it here. <laughs> but other people have said this for sure. For sure other people have said this. But I can't find no, the yeah, we found, material. We found multiple people looking on, on forums, forums and, stuff. and stuff asking like, hey, did he actually say this? So it is, it's either some weird, like, what what is the whole Bernstein, Bernstein bears yeah. thing? <laughs> a mandala effect. Yeah, it's yeah. either a mandala effect or someone just needs to straight up you There's and me, something you and me, we're going to Bill Gates' house yeah. tomorrow. We're going to ask him what his favorite game is. We're going to ask him if Fusion Frenzy is still his favorite game. If it's game. Fusion Frenzy or Fusion Frenzy 2, I, we'll, we'll go crazy. <laughs> like I And we'll play it with him right yeah. then and there. Yeah. We'll bring a, an original Xbox. Not, not, oh, he'll not, have it set up. Not the one, yeah. <laughs> he he won't have the it. one. He won't have the one released to the public. Yeah, he'll he'll have that prototype one yeah, you showed yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is literally just this gigantic physical X. <laughs> it looks so bad. Please I think it look looks it dope. Up. Anyone... It, you sh- look it up. I think it looks dope. Andrew thinks it looks bad. <laughs> Both can be true. <laughs> Both can be true. 
I guess oh you're right. Oh my gosh, it's so bad though. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tasteless. It's so like It's 2000s. literally an Xbox. Yeah. Like it's a yeah, It's like I a don't... giant cube in the uh, shape of an Can you X. imagine like having one of those in your place today? <laughs> like it just looks so cool. Like it... where would you put it? No entertainment system would have been able to keep it around. Yeah, that's that's true. You just put it on the floor. Yeah. I prefer the DVD player, VHS player design of most consoles. I miss a little style in the game console. You don't get those like the N64 back when they had those like candy colored N64 releases. You don't yeah. you don't get that anymore, there was man. There's a Pikachu N64. Oh, a... the the Pikachu that has like the the model of the N64 <laughs> yeah. is like twice as big as the so <laughs> as a normal just uh, to account for the Pikachu on the top. I always think that the original PlayStation was so good looking. It it has yeah. such a it has such a style to it. And, and the, the Nintendo sixty four definitely got silly. Its original design was a little like what's the Lego competitor? The non Lego Legos. Oh, Mega Blocks. Mega Blocks. It sort of had a Mega Blocks look to yeah, it. Mega Blocks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're going on a Mega Blocks tangent. Just a oh, sec. Mega Blocks. You know, when you step on a Mega Blocks. <laughs> That's a Mandela effect thing. That's like <laughs> we wake up tomorrow and everybody's talking about Mega Blocks. Yeah, no, and it's like it flips, and we're the only ones that remember that Legos were the more popular. Oh, oh it's like that movie stuff. that just came out like last Yesterday. year. Yesterday. Yes. Everyone forgets you know about how the that Beatles. Movie ends? Yeah, I know. Have you seen it? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's funny. It's so ridiculous. It's, it, I, I, it, we can't say it here because of spoilers. Yeah, because, yeah, no. Someone is watching our podcast. Okay, Andrew, you. How are they so allowed you're saying, to do that? You're saying that someone is going to watch our podcast <laughs> about the early 2000s yeah. game Fusion Frenzy. And, they and you're saying you they haven't seen yesterday yet? Yeah, that Venn Everyone's diagram. Everyone's seen yesterday. <laughs> that Venn diagram is one. If you played Fusion Frenzy, then you've seen <laughs> The movie yesterday. Yeah, that it's 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 just two circles on yeah. top of one another at this point. Oh god. Oh that yeah, the ending of that movie is wild. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, everybody. How did we get to yesterday from Fusion? Frenzy? Yo, I don't know. Yo, <laughs> okay, we gotta move on. I'm um, on the Shaquille O'Neal character page on the Giant Bomb Wiki. So, I think I screwed up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> How many games is he in? Yo, like like forty. Oh yeah, because he's probably in a bunch of. He's like, in a bunch of like standard basketball 2K, games, but 2Ks. he also has like his own games, like Shaq Fu and Shaq Down, and uh, Shaq Fu Alleged Reward. What is, what is that genie movie he's in? Kazam. Kazam. Is there a Kazam video game? Do Kazam. we know? <laughs> okay, I'll close the page. Close the page. Not on the page anymore. Yeah, we can't look up Kazam anymore. <laughs> oh man, but I think we had fun playing it just because we like to make fun of it. And I think we just yeah. enjoy playing games together and like, like a lot of multiplayer games that are bad. It's good. It's yeah. <laughs> it's like yesterday we were playing the new Super Mario Brothers. It's a good single player game. Yeah. I th- but it gets absolutely chaotic. Yeah. If you play it with more, it's than a different one. game. It's completely different, and it's and I think Fusion Frenzy does capture that element of chaos mm-hmm. that a lot of multiplayer games have. And I said this at the very beginning of the podcast, but it, Fusion Frenzy was kind of labeled as Microsoft's answer to Mario Party. Yeah. And I think in a lot of ways, the structure of Fusion, Fusion Frenzy is a lot better than Mario Party. Yeah. Because a lot of Mario Party, the boards, the actual like... Board game part of it. Board game part of the game is just kind of boring. Like it yeah. takes too or much time. It's frustrating. There's only a couple boards across all the Mario Party games that are fun. Yeah, in my personal, in my humble opinion, in my personal opinion, and as well. Microsoft, you, you know, they just said, "Screw that, we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna take, we're just out gonna half- have mini games, <laughs> forty-five mini games." There you go. If Mario mm-hmm. Party is one hundred percent an annoying game to play, Fusion Frenzy takes out fifty percent of that annoyance. So it's only 50%. it only has the other fifty percent, which you might say isn't that one hundred percent annoying again just with a different type of annoying. You're right. (laughs) That's Fusion Frenzy. That's Fusion Frenzy. And on that note, do you have anything else to say about this train wreck of a game? I don't know if I do. I think it's important, though, to hammer home what this game, what it informs about the state of video games at the time, 
what Microsoft was at, about at the time and sure. what they were going for. Because this episode wasn't really... <laughs> it, it wasn't it was really about, about Fusion Frenzy. It was yeah. about... We wanted to talk about video games of the era because it's yes. so interesting how Microsoft made their impact on the industry. And on that note, I'm Connor Cleary. I'm Andrew Spencer. And this has been a Game A Week podcast. If you want to learn any more information about Fusion Frenzy, simply just type it into your Google bar. You can go see it on Wikipedia. There's a nice page on it. And then if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about our podcast, simply email me. Fusion Frenzy. We love that good Fusion Frenzy gossip. We love Fusion Frenzy. Give us some Fusion Frenzy gossip, please. If you know where Bill Gates said that, Please, oh yeah, if you have that video, if you have that video, if someone has that video of Bill Gates saying Fusion Frenzy is his favorite game, please send it to me it's at really important. A video game a week at gmail.com. A V I D E O G A M E A W E E K at gmail.com. Thank you guys for listening and we'll see you next week.